Okay. Hope everyone can hear us. We'll go. We'll start. I think. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. All right, bye. Bye. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Sorry about the, uh, the teething problems with uh, getting online. Uh, let me just pray for us as we begin a devotion for this afternoon. Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this time that we've come before your throne of grace. I pray, our God, even as we come around your word. Our prayer, oh God, is that Lord, you would help us to learn at least one thing about yourself from your word this afternoon. Help us, oh God, to love you even more from what we learn about you. Help us to recognize in this time that, our oh God, you are our comfort and that, Lord, you are our guide. As we continue this afternoon, God, we pray, God, that you illumine our minds with your word and speak to us, each one, today. We pray this in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, this afternoon, I want us to look at uh, Psalm 91. We hope no one has looked at it uh, during this period. And I ask Margaret to read for us Psalm 91. Psalm 91, and please, once you read through it, keep the psalm open because we'll go through that psalm together. Um, psalm 91, and I'm reading from the New International Version, NIV. Um, it reads, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your, at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord, who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you, nor disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will, come, he will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And that's the reading of the word. Well, just a bit of a background, um, the way we, or at least we do uh, devotion. Uh, growing up in Scripture Union, uh, when I was at secondary school, I was taught the importance of daily reading. And as part of the habit, I was taught to pray read, think, and then pray. In the thinking part of uh, our devotion, I was taught to ask certain questions. And some of the questions I was taught to ask were, what is the text saying? Who or what is it a passage speaking about? Just a general observation of the passage. What does the text mean? What does, it, does the passage mean? Here, not asking what does it mean to me yet, to, to me yet, but just a, a general learning of what is the passage is all about. What does the text mean to me or to us? Learning to apply that passage, and what is the text telling me to do? Now, these were station, steps I was taught to 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 to, to ask a question so that it helped me think through the the passage. So. Using the same technique, we've looked at this passage in Psalm 91. 
And in the passage we have just read, we see that it's all about God. Or specifically, it's about helping us know that God is our comfort. And this is what it teaches us. And this afternoon, I want us to just break through or break down this passage in three sections. The first bit by outlining for us nine ways we can take comfort in God during difficult times such as we're going through. The second bit by showing us how and why we should put our trust in God, rather giving us a foundation of our faith as why we need to trust God. Thirdly, we'll look at by you know, showing us what motivates God to deal with us the way he chooses to do. So at this time, I ask Margaret to just share. Um, right, the psalm describes God as our shelter, shadow, a refuge, fortress, shield, buckler. Um, and you'll notice that in some um, uh, Bible versions, rampart is used. Uh, but for, for, for the explanation, I'm using buckler. Dwelling, rescuer, and protection. Firstly, God is described as our shelter. That's in verse 1. God is our hiding place, covering us with his good purposes. Um, then it's, it's, um, in the same psalm, God is our shadow. Again, that's in verse 1. God is over and beyond us seeing more than we see and knowing more than we know. We can rest in his shadow. The next one is God as our refuge, and that's in verse two. He is a safe place for us of security. We climb into him. God as our fortress, verse two. He is our defense whose promises cannot be inhibited. God as our shield, in verse 4, resting in our God deflects the enemies of fear and doubt in times of trial. God as our buckler or shield that completely engulfs, in that, in, that's in verse 4. He is a defense on every side. He knows every part of us and our lives. No aspect is beyond his reach. God is our dwelling, in verse 9. God protects, God's protection is not fleeting. His protection serves for our continual habitation. God as our rescuer in verse 14. He leads us off with him, drawing us to himself and for, sorry, drawing us to himself and rescuing us from being overcome by the world. God as our protection in verse 14, in his protection, he carries us to an elevated place by trusting in him. Our minds and hearts become inaccessible to the churning fears. As believers, we have committed to Christ, our lives and our times, and that they are in his hands. Our dream is that our days might bring him eternal glory. The reality of God's comfort and power to deliver us to eternal life is what gives us the spiritual deliverance from being dominated by the pandemic in these days. The promises of God, of life to come, and of his divine purposes in this life shade, shelter, and satisfy us. When fears of the coronavirus and its impact surround us, how much fiercer is the security of an infinite God. Let me just carry on where Margaret has left off. The question that we need to ask ourselves is from the same part is, how and why should we put trust in God? What is the basis of our faith? Here again, we need to go, we can go back to the beginning of that psalm, verses 1 and 2. In verse 1 and 2, we have outlined for us the foundations of our faith. You see, it is all about believing in the person of God and who he is. The psalmist here employs four names for God. These names should not only encourage us, but challenge us to put our trust in him. In verse 1, 
use na the name Eledion or the Most High. There's another name, the Shaddai or the Almighty. Verse 2, we have Yahweh, the Lord, and we have Elohim, my God. You see, it is all about believing and trusting in the promises of God because of who he is. That is our foundation of, the foundation of our faith. The psalmist wants us to trust God as our refuge and place of safety. As we'll see, we'll see later on in verse 14 and 15, it's all about acknowledging God's name in whatever circumstance that we find ourselves in. in whatever situation we find ourselves in, acknowledging God's name and who he is. And once we acknowledge God's name, it leads us to what we find in verses 14 to 16. Here there's one phrase that stands out in verses uh, 14, uh, 14 to 16. So in verse 14 it says, because he loves me, says the Lord, because he loves me, and then he, uh, he, he lists a number of things here. So because he loves me, the Lord therefore says, I'll deliver him. You see, the first fruit of a surrendered heart is salvation, freedom from the guilt and power of sin. The law is fulfilled in one word, he loves me. We have an example of David's own life here, how God delivered David when we read in Psalms, uh, 1 Samuel 17 and 50. We can see in other lives of people like Joseph, Daniel and Paul, God is, is committed to delivering us if we love him. He says again in the same passage, I will exhort him, I will rescue him, I will protect him, verse 14. I like the way it's put in uh, King, King James, it says, I will set him on high. You see, after salvation comes exaltation, or rather, to be saved is to be exalted. Taken out of this fearful pit to be rescued and protected, if we have been crucified with Christ, we have also been raised together with him. Verse 15 says, I'll answer him. What an inspiring promise this is. Let your request be made unto God, Paul says in Philippians 4, 6. Here is his own assurance that if you have set your love upon him, he will answer you. If love for him is a motive, then we shall not ask wrongly or amiss. We read in James chapter 4, verse 3. He goes and says, I'll be with him. This is the promise of his fellowship in the days of our trouble. If he's with us, then we can fear no evil, as we read on Psalm 23. God knows that his abiding presence is a continued necessity for guidance for strength and victory. And he says, I'll honor him. Because he loves me, I'll honor him. We honor him by setting a love upon him. So those who honor me, he says, I'll honor. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 30. Seek the honor that comes from God only. And his special favor will be manifest in your life. Read in John chapter 12, verse 26. Finally, he says, I will satisfy him. He shall be satisfied with long life, implying that the privilege will have a privilege of everlasting joy and service. Our days upon the earth, if lived in his heart, his love will be long, as long as, as needful for the honor of his name. He gives to his own eternal life, and they shall be satisfied when they are, they are awake in his likeness. This is just a few thoughts we thought we share from Psalm 91. And we don't know if there are any people who, who, who you know, what you learned from this. And if there are any prayer requests, uh, please, we have a few minutes to just pray with you and to share. I'm just scrolling through. Uh, let's see. Karen, thanks for helping. <laughs> um, okay, but we don't.
don't seem to have any. Okay, it just seems to be things. Okay, hi Barbara, hi Ian, hi Francesca and Boati, um, hi John, Andrea, hello, hi Shamila, Ian, hi, hi Howard, Peter, Peter Clark, um, Peter Davis as well. Peter Davis, hello, <laughs> <laughs> De uh, Debbie. Hi, uh, hi Emily. Yeah, Hudson is helping with the text, you know, the it, technical it's... stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Karen, for your help signing on. Uh, we haven't got any prayer requests, but um, let me just pray, um, and, and you know, we will close. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we can uh, look into your word and just uh, hear you speak to our hearts. Thank you, Father, that all you require of us is to love you. And this uh, devotional time, Father, we uh, want to acknowledge that and say, Father, we love you. And that if there's anything in our lives that's blocking uh, us from giving all our love to you, Father, help us. Uh, to acknowledge what that is and be able to get rid of it. We pray, Father God, that uh, we would experience your security. We would experience your love in its fullness. And that we will also experience rest in you. That, Father, in whatever turmoil we may be experiencing, we know that we have peace in you we have rest in you and so father may we uh, now hide in your shadow may we rest in you lord i pray heavenly father for uh, the church rainers lane baptist i pray father that um, you would continue to uh, draw hearts to yourself and continue to build each one and meet each one's needs. We pray, Heavenly Father, that for those that are unwell today, that, Father, your hand of healing will be upon them and that they would also experience your presence. Father God, may you continue to pour out your love. May you fill us with your love that we too would be overflowing and pour it out. Father, we ask that may we also be people who are kind and gentle to others. May those that are not reading their Bible read our lives as we display the love of Christ in our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.